Hello everyone, in this video we're going to integrate the square root of a squared plus x squared uh, with respect to x where a is a real parameter and I want to go over this integral specifically because I'm going to use the result in my next video but I suppose it's kind of a fun integral in its own right as well. So as soon as you see an integrand of this sort of form where you have x squared added to or subtracted from something you should probably be thinking of trig identities because there are various useful trigonometric identities involving squared trig functions that can lead to quite nice simplifications in your integrand if you make an appropriate trigonometric substitution. Now because the integrand here has a plus sign as opposed to a minus sign, uh, we might want to get the trig identity 1 plus tan squared equals sec squared involved, and therefore a logical substitution um, would be to let x be uh, a tan of theta, where theta is the new variable that we're going to integrate with respect to, and so if we just differentiate both sides we find that dx is a sec squared theta d theta, because sec squared is the derivative of tan. Let's also consider the quantity a squared plus x squared, just to make it explicitly clear uh, why this is a good substitution. So if you consider a squared plus x squared in terms of theta, you're going to be able to factor out an a squared, because when you square this definition of x, you are going to get an a squared, and then you're going to get 1 plus tan squared theta, and as promised earlier we can then use the identity 1 plus tan squared is sec squared, so this is a squared uh, sec squared theta. So let's substitute those results into our integral which I've called i, so i is the integral of, you've got the square root of a squared plus x squared, which is the square root of this, which is just a sec theta, and then we establish that dx is a sec squared theta, uh, that's integrated with respect to theta. I'm going to take out a factor of a squared at the beginning. Uh, I'm not going to combine the sec and the sec squared into sec cubed. I'm just going to leave it as sec theta times sec squared of theta. The reason I'm not combining those into uh, sec cubed is that we can apply integration by parts to this integral um, where our u function is sec theta and our uh, dv by d theta function is sec squared theta. And I'm choosing it this way around because sec squared is easy to integrate because um, as we discussed earlier uh, sec squared is the derivative of tan. So if we choose u as sec theta and dv by d theta as sec squared theta then v is just going to be uh, tan theta. So let's see what happens when we integrate by parts. We're going to get a squared and then you've got your uv term. Uh, u uh, is sec theta, and we've just said that v is going to be tan theta, so that's your uv term. Then you've got minus the integral of v uh, du by d theta, uh, we've still got that constant prefactor of a squared, it's going to be the integral of, um, well du by d theta is, is just the derivative of sec, the derivative of sec is sec times tan, so we've got sec theta tan theta, uh, and then we've got v which we already know is tan theta, that's multiplied by tan theta and integrated with respect to theta. I'm going to use that trig identity once again uh, because notice that you have got uh, tan squared overall, uh, so I'm going to keep the sec theta at the beginning and I'm going to write my tan squared as sec squared minus 1, so I've got sec theta times sec squared theta minus 1 uh, integrated with respect to theta. So the point of doing that is that something quite nice happens, remember that the left hand side of this equation is just i. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with this first term, your uv term, just yet. But I'm going to expand the brackets here and get two separate integrals. The first of those integrals will be uh, minus a squared times the integral of sec cubed theta d theta. But a squared times the integral of sec cubed theta d theta is just the same as i itself. I didn't explicitly write out the simplified form earlier, but that's what it is. And so when you expand those brackets, you're going to get a minus i on the right-hand side of the equation. And then uh, you're just going to be left with the integral of uh, a squared uh, times sec theta d theta, which is coming from sec theta times minus 1, and then there's an extra minus sign in front. So then you're going to move this minus i over to the other side, you're going to have 2i on the left hand side, then divide the whole thing by 2, um, and so essentially this term and this term will each acquire a factor of uh, a half. So if we just keep the left hand side as i, we're going to have a half times this same first term, and then you're going to have plus a half a squared times the integral of sec theta. Now when it comes to integrating sec theta either you just use a standard result 
or you use um, a certain trick which you would probably never think of if you haven't seen it before but the trick is uh, you make it into a fraction take sec theta and you multiply by sec theta plus tan theta over sec theta plus tan theta which is just multiplying by one uh, therefore that's fine um, but then your numerator is going to become sec squared theta plus sec theta tan theta and your denominator is of course just sec theta plus tan theta uh, integrated with respect to theta. The logic of doing that is that sec squared and sec times tan are both uh, derivatives of a trig function. So sec squared is the derivative of tan and uh, sec times tan is the derivative of sec. Um, but then you notice that because of that, the numerator of this fraction is exactly the derivative of the denominator. And when you're trying to do an integral, and you've got a derivative over the original function, you just get a natural log. So it's natural log of modulus of uh, sec theta plus um, tan theta plus our constant of integration. So now all that remains to be done is to write this whole thing in terms of x. Um, we are going to do that by going back to the original relationship between x and theta. So x is a tan theta. That immediately tells us that tan theta is just x over a. Uh, sec theta is the square root of 1 plus tan squared theta. Uh, but we already know that tan theta is x over a, so we can write sec theta as 1 plus x squared over a squared. So if we just write that whole thing in terms of x, then you're going to have a half. Um, this a squared, let's think of that as a times a, one of those factors of a is going to turn this x over a into just an x, and so there's going to be an x here. The other factor of a from the a squared um, can be brought into the square root, and then it's the square root of a squared plus x squared, uh, like this. And then you've got plus half a squared uh, natural log of modulus of, okay, let's first of all just directly uh, sub in, um, first of all, uh, square root of 1 plus x squared over a squared, and then plus x over a, like that. Finally, let's just tidy up the argument of the logarithm a little bit. Um, so natural log of, what I'm going to do is just turn it into uh, one big fraction, so put this whole thing over a denominator of a. I'm going to flip the order of the terms, not that that really matters, but the first term is therefore just going to be an x, because we're going to put that over a eventually, coming from, from there. Um, because we're putting the whole thing over a, that means we need to multiply uh, this by a, we're essentially timesing by uh, a over a, and so we're going to get plus the square root of a squared plus x squared, that whole thing over a. Uh, and then plus c. If you wanted to, you could use laws of logs to uh, write the, the log term as log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator, and then you could absorb the log of the denominator term into the plus c, right, because a is just a constant anyway. However, I prefer not to do that. It's mathematically fine, but I prefer not to do it because if we have this whole thing over a, then it makes it clear that we're taking the log of a uh, dimensionless quantity. You can see from the original integrand um, that x and a have to have the same dimensions um, because we're adding the squares of those uh, quantities together, uh, and therefore x over a is dimensionless and the square root over a is also dimensionless. Um, as a physicist, I just think that's that's a little bit nicer. That's all for this time. See you again soon when I'll be using this result to solve a physics problem.